Are you ready to step into a world of luxury, beauty and history? Then look no further than the Amber Fort here in Jaipur. This fort is a must-see for anybody travelling to India. Join us on a journey through the Amber Fort and discover the wonder that awaits you within its walls. I can't wait, look at it. Unreal! But before we do that, I'm going to ask you to pause the video, subscribe to the channel, also like this video and hit the notification bell so you'll be updated on any other videos you make through this wonderful country that is India. It also really helps the channel grow, so fair play. So first impression coming in there on the tuk-tuk, it really is quite striking. The fort goes along the top of the hill. I think you can see some of Jaigar Fort as well. So it's really quite stunning, it's epic and yeah looking forward to getting inside and seeing what it's all about the tuk tuk here costs 300 rupees which is just under three euro really reasonable i think it's about 14 kilometers from our hotel which is basically in bani park it's one of the central areas within jaipur can't get over this unreal so as we come in here to the entrance of the fort we notice mayotta lake I'm sure we're going to learn about all the details and all the history once we get inside as well. I would guess it's too with keeping enemies out, making it more difficult to get inside. Quite hectic out here as well. There's so many cars, so many tuk-tuks, all probably coming from Jaipur and the surrounding towns. So, so the Amber Fort was built in the 16th century by Raja Man Singh I, who was a trusted general of Emperor Akbar. So when we arrived here on the tuk-tuk, there was plenty of other fellas down below offering to take us to the top on another tuk-tuk for four and five hundred rupees but not a chance it takes about 10 12 minutes to walk up it's an absolute rip off so don't be lazy and make the walk so this fort served as the palace of the kachwaha rajput rulers until jaipur was made the capital of rajasthan in the 18th century it's so cool here as well if you look kind of up into the mountains around the fort itself you can see these other layers of walls and towers it actually reminds me a little bit to the great wall of china have a look at that tell me that doesn't speak of the great wall of china you can walk you can walk you look good looking good hello <laughs> So underneath the fort itself here, there's this beautiful little garden area. I actually missed the name. It was on a big signpost as we were coming down, but I'm gonna have to check that and I'll put it up here now on the screen. So it's really beautiful here. It's a nice big green open area. It was a nice little open area, which is covered and there's plenty of people sitting down, chilling out there. It's very cool. The palace here is a mix of Mughal and Rajput architectural styles with influences from Jain and Hindu culture as well. And once again, all throughout Jaipur, the red sandstone and the white marble as well gives it a striking appearance here. It really hits you as you, as you arrive here. Indian people really love taking pictures with us and we really love taking pictures with Indian people. The upper garden is called Dil Aram Garden. It's the one that you will come through through the entrance. If the dog can do it in this heat, so can you. Also because there was a number of rulers over an extended period of time, the style of the architecture here has amalgamated and become what it is today. Absolutely fantastic. So we're beginning the ascent up now here. It should take 10 or 12 minutes. There's plenty of people as you go up selling jewelry, magnets, these bits of things. So if you need to bring something home, you can get something from here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So there's a pedestrian path up to the palace as well and then there's a path for the elephants. You can actually go up on the back of an elephant here. Some people do it, some people don't. I don't think it's for us. To be honest, the elephants look very sad. Look like they were in, not enjoying themselves and yeah, just don't agree with it. Really. So we're after coming up now through the first kind of arches here and you can see we're in this massive 
courtyard area. Not a lot going on here, I think, but if you're interested in saving a little bit more energy as well, you can rent segways up here for about 200 rupees. It's a great way of getting around. The courtyards in the palace include Diwan e Am, which is the hall of public audience, and Diwan e Cabs, which is the hall of the private audience. Jalib Chok is the public square, and the Sukhni Was is the hall of pleasure. So behind me here is the Chan Paul. This is the gate that the commoners would have used to enter the fort. So you actually get to enter up this far into the fort without buying a ticket. So to go any further, you're going to need to buy. So for foreign tourists, it's 500 rupees. The fort is made up of several different palaces, one of the famous being Shish Mahal, so I'm really looking forward to seeing this one. Lupe is just after getting the audio guide there, which is fairly handy, you can obviously get it in a different language, so if you want to do that and learn a bit more in-depth details about this fort, then you can do that. Also, Amber Fort is also known as Amber Palace, and this is where the royal family would have been. A little bit away from us, where we're hopefully going to visit on this trip as well, is Jaigur Fort. Jaigar Fort was built to protect the royal family here in the palace. There's an underground passage where you can actually go to Jaigar Fort as well. It's about 500 meters and I really want to do that as well. We're now in the second part of the fort here and the Shish Mahal is next and there's another palace then at the end. So first impressions is the intricate detail again and the architecture is mind-blowing. I don't know, apart from India, if I've seen anything like this before, this sort of style, it's really interesting, very curious to learn more. I've also been told as well, because of the grandeur and the historical significance of this palace, plenty of Bollywood films have been filmed here. I have to say, I'm not familiar with any of them, to be honest, but I know that they're a big money spinner. They're absolutely huge in this part of the world. So maybe after this, I'm gonna to have to watch a few and see what they're like. Behind me, you have the one e Am. As I mentioned before, it's the hall of public audience. It really reminds me to the city palace in Jaipur as well although it doesn't have the allure or the grandeur but still impressive nonetheless. You also get some pretty amazing views here as well to be fair have a look at that. Unbelievable. In the centre of this room, the Maharaja would have sat along with his noblemen and officials and a commoner or somebody else who would have been requesting a plea would have had to stand outside on carpets and shout in to the Maharaja what the request was. Like that must have been a pretty intimidating way of speaking to the king, being all that distance away and just basically pleading from outside, I don't know. Just after coming to Ganesh Gate here at the moment, this will bring us into the third area of the complex. And this is where people could enter into the private parts of the palace. It's covered in these amazing frescoes and it was created by Mirza Raja Ja Singh. We're coming into the office part now where all the admin and paperwork would have been done. Have to say we're being treated to some superb views up here. So as you may expect as well, palaces generally around this time would have had Turkish baths and the royal family here would have had them as well. I want to have a Turkish bath one day and the Arabic word for bath would be haman, so learning something new today as well. The rooms and the walls are very close together, it's a very tight squeeze but I imagine it's something to do with keeping the steam in, keeping the heat in as well. So I don't know if you can see behind me but right up at the very top there's these tiny little windows that the women of the palace could watch the state functions down here in the hall, the public audience. So a lot of these women were kind of kept behind doors, not very visible to the public, but they were at least allowed to watch down here what was happening. And with this gate as well, Lord Ganesh was basically taught to remove obstructions that would come in the human form. So by entering through this gate, it would be taught to have removed them from the people who would pass through it. And I do think that that's some reason why a lot of people have a Ganesh at their front door. And of course, we're after getting some great selfies with these lovely Indian people. I'll put them up here for you to have a look. So here we are in the hall of private audience. And as you can see, it's definitely a little bit more cornered off from outside. 
but it's really beautiful in here. The greenery, the garden, like you just have to look at the buildings and the architecture here, it's fantastic. So finally we've made it to Shish Mahal here and it is absolutely beautiful. You can see all the mirrors inside, they're just reflecting and flashing on the wall, it's really cool to be here. The walls, the ceilings and the floors are all made up of these tiny mirrors and it's absolutely mesmerising. Nice to meet you, thank you very much. very busy here today. This is the busiest site we've been at so far in India I would guess. I don't know if you can see behind me but the wall just glitters. Absolutely spectacular. The Shish Mahal is as good as I expected from what I read. All the little mirrors, the intricate carvings, up on the walls, down on the floors, the ceiling, you name it. It really stands out here so far. It's epic. So the interesting thing of these wheelchairs is that they were used for the Ranis, which were the wives of the Maharajas, in festivals because they carry such heavy dresses that they couldn't even walk on them apparently, so they would just have to be pushed along as they went. Access to this second court is not direct and this was done intentionally. When designing the layout of the palace, the access route was designed to have many corners. This was a tactic to confuse the enemies in case they were planning an attack here. The passage led to the back of the court which would expose the invaders to the guard room. Genius. To be honest, I still can't believe that Amber Fort and Jagger Fort are connected by an underground tunnel. Like, it's 500 metres long and that is so cruel. It's like something out of a James Bond movie, but they really use this to escape in times of war. It must have allowed the royal family to get to Jagar Fort undetected when they were being under attack, basically. How cruel is that? And all the way back in 2013, 10 years ago, this hill of forts, Jagar Fort, Amber Fort, Nahargar Fort, these were all made UNESCO World Heritage Sites and I can completely see why. Next up is Man Singh Palace. Sanana Mahal, so basically this was where the Maharaja's two favourite wives were located, interestingly enough. It's quite a small little area, I have to say, but this is where they would have been based and only the Maharaja would have been allowed in. So the only men who would have been allowed in there were eunuchs. If you don't know what a eunuch is, have a Google. And back in the day, this area where the women would have been housed would have been covered in serious decoration. It looks a little bit bare at the moment, but Back then, it would have been much more extravagant. In these rooms, it would have been 12 rooms for 12 wives. And yeah, small enough rooms, small enough areas. But they all had their own little mini apartment here. Also in here, you have a little passage into the wives' rooms, which leads from the Maharaja's room. If at any particular time he felt the need to come and make a visit to one of his wives, he could easily access them through this passage and each of the Maharaja's wives would have been listed into a hierarchical system. That would affect where their rooms would have been located in this area as well. So this is the palace of Rajaman Singh and it would have taken about 25 years in total to build. All the wives here would have enjoyed dancing and singing in this little square here behind me. So this is quite an interesting place. A recurring theme throughout our time in India, but a fun one. Believe it or not, it's actually starting to rain here now, but we are covered here in this little, I don't know how to say, arch roof, but the views are absolutely amazing from here. You can see down to all the houses around the fort itself. Absolutely unreal. When you come up the stairs here, sorry, sorry lads, just nearly running into a few boys there. When you come up the stairs here, really recommend it because you can definitely get much better views. You're obviously up higher, it just tends to work that way. And there's many of these corner points where you can have a nice viewpoint down, savage.
just down in this little section as well, as you can see behind me, there would have been elephant fights. How mad is that? In Amber Palace, this is where the royal family would have been based. And in Jagger Fort, that's where all the weapons and ammunition would have been located to protect the people here. Hello, Hamza. So that's it back at the hotel now after a very intense tuk-tuk ride back. All I can say is the Amber Palace in Jaipur is truly a sight to behold and a testament to India's rich culture and heritage. Seriously, like even the trek up the hill to the fort itself was absolutely stunning. When you do a 360 you can see the wall where the palace was it within and you can see the town of Amber as well. So really amazing. I would have to say if you're coming to Jaipur in the Amber Palace you definitely have to go, you have to take it off the list, it's not going to disappoint you. If you're interested in India's cultural heritage or the architectural structures then this is going to be the place for you. And just one more thing before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, it'll work wonders for pushing the channel out to other people who are interested in these types of videos. So that's it for now, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to put another video on India up here, it's one of the great historical sites and definitely worth watching so do check that out. Thanks again and talk to you on the next one. Cheers!